When it comes to electric vehicles, efficiency is everything. So in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly why it's so important and explain how this currently gives a massive advantage to Tesla vehicles. Welcome everyone to Project Future. My name is Zach and I make videos about electric vehicles. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more. So just like gas cars, electric vehicles have efficiency metrics. And instead of miles per gallon, there are a number of different ways to look at it. For example, the EPA here in the United States uses MPGE or kilowatt hours per 100 miles. And personally, I think these are both a little confusing. MPGE is trying to compare to gas cars by converting battery storage into the equivalent quantity of gallons of gas, and then calculating how many miles per gallon equivalent the electric car gets. The other metric of kilowatt hours per 100 miles is also kind of annoying. We don't assess gas efficiency by miles per 100 gallons, we do it by single gallons. And as an engineer, I can't help but think that it just makes more sense to break this down to its simplest and easiest to understand form, watt hours per mile. And guess what? This is the unit that Tesla uses in their vehicles, and I just think it's very digestible. It's simply the amount of energy required to drive one mile. Anyway, let's get to the point of this video why efficiency is so important when it comes to EVs, and why it shouldn't be overlooked when deciding which vehicle is right for you. First up, let's talk about charging. Charging is a big reason that efficiency when it comes to electric cars is even more important than efficiency with gas cars. Getting gas really only takes a few minutes, so it's not that much of an inconvenience if you have to make one additional stop on a road trip because you're driving an inefficient car. But when it comes to electric cars, a less efficient car means that you're gonna spend a lot more time charging to drive the same distance. Let's use an example and compare the 2021 Tesla Model 3 Long Range and the long-awaited Tesla Killing Polestar 2. These are similar size cars with similar target audiences and similar size batteries. When tested by the EPA, the Polestar 2 used 37 kilowatt hours per 100 miles or 370 watt hours per mile. The Tesla Model 3 on the other hand used 25 kilowatt hours per 100 miles or 250 watt hours per mile. And this is why the Model 3 has an EPA rated range of 353 miles while the Polestar 2 only comes in at 233 miles even with similarly sized batteries. So let's say you're going on a thousand mile road trip and you wanna compare how much charging you're gonna to have to do between each of these cars. And this is gonna be purely theoretical based on the EPA tested efficiencies. With the Polestar 2, you're driving a thousand miles and using 370 watt hours per mile. So driving a thousand miles will require 370 kilowatt hours of total energy. With the Model 3, you're only using 250 watt hours per mile, so the journey will require 250 kilowatt hours of total energy, 120 kilowatt hours less than the Polestar 2. And since they both have batteries with around 75 kilowatt hours of capacity, this means that the Polestar 2 would have to stop two more times to charge compared to the Model 3. Now this is a theoretical example and will obviously vary based on available chargers and driving habits, but it's safe to say that you're going to spend a lot more time stopped charging in a less efficient EV. And when it comes to charging, a lot of people like to look at the miles per hour of range added to the vehicle while charging. Basically, this is taking the charger power, which could be 50 or 150 kilowatts, for example, and then factoring in the car's efficiency to calculate how many miles of range would be added to the car if left charging for one full hour. At a 50 kilowatt fast charger, the Polestar would gain about 135 miles, while the Model 3 would gain about 200 miles of range, both charging at the exact same charger. And at a 150 kilowatt fast charger, the Model 3 would gain range at a speed of about 600 miles per hour, while the Polestar would be around 405. Now going back to the 1000 mile road trip example, if this were a gas car, we'd be talking about adding 5 to 10 minutes to the total trip by having to stop and get gas an extra time or two. But with an electric vehicle, this is going to be more like 1 to 2 hours that we're adding to the total trip with this added charging and that's much more significant. Another factor here is cost, and electricity is typically paid for per kilowatt hour. And if your car can drive more miles per kilowatt hour of energy, then you're gonna pay less to drive it. Continuing from the example before and assuming 25 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity, the Polestar 2 would cost $92.50 to drive 1,000 miles, while the Model 3 would only cost $62.50. And over 15,000 miles of driving, this adds up to over $450 of savings with the Model 3. A lot of electric vehicle owners like to talk about the lower operating costs with these vehicles, but if you want the lowest operating costs, make sure you buy an efficient EV. 
On top of charging time and cost, there's another huge advantage to having an efficient electric vehicle, battery longevity. The more efficient the vehicle, the lower the amount of times you have to charge the vehicle in order to drive a set distance. A huge concern that you hear from EV skeptics are how the batteries are going to hold up after hundreds of thousands of miles of driving. Let's go back to the example for a second to see how many charge cycles are required to drive each of these cars 200,000 miles. You can see that the Polestar 2 would require almost 950 charges from empty to full in order to drive 200,000 miles while the Model 3 would only require 667 full charges, meaning the battery in the Tesla is going to last longer. Obviously, there are other factors in battery degradation, mostly related to charging habits, but let's assume that both have the same battery tech and can be fully cycled 1,500 times before needing replacement. After 316,000 miles on the Polestar, the battery would have to be replaced, but you'd be able to go 450,000 miles in the Model 3 before needing to replace the battery. And this also means that a more efficient electric vehicle is going to break even on emissions faster. A lot of people that buy electric vehicles are concerned about the environment and they're trying to lower their carbon footprint. And for the most part, electric vehicles result in higher carbon emissions during the manufacturing process compared to gas cars. And this is based on the large amount of energy required to build the battery packs. But after the car is built and on the road, it is almost always going to result in lower carbon emissions compared to a gas car. But how quickly the gas car's emissions surpass the electric vehicle emissions depend totally on the efficiency of both vehicles. And we could be talking about years of difference here, so just something to consider. And obviously if you're charging on 100% renewables, then this doesn't really matter. Efficiency with EVs is also incredibly important because the more efficient a car is, the more efficient the car can become. Now before you laugh at that statement, let me explain. Batteries are heavy, and heavy cars, whether gas or electric, are less efficient. So if you make an electric vehicle more efficient, you can make the batteries smaller and still get good range out of it. And by making the battery smaller, you make the car lighter and thus even more efficient. For example, the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus has only a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, yet gets 260 miles of range compared with 353 miles of range with the 75 kilowatt hour battery in the long range Model 3. So for 50% more battery capacity, you only get 35% more range. And that's mostly because there's a 500 pound difference in weight between these two cars. All right, let's move on. Now to illustrate how various popular EVs stack up, I made a table comparing range and efficiency in both watt hours per mile and MPGE. I pulled all of this data off of the EPA website, fueleconomy.gov, in case you want to search for a car that I didn't list here. Anyway, the chart is sorted with the best efficiency on top, and you can see that Tesla takes four of the top six spots. The Hyundai Ioniq is an incredibly efficient EV, but unfortunately has a small 38 kilowatt hour battery, and therefore a shorter range of 170 miles, and isn't quite as usable because of this. But I tried to include a variety of EVs because I see there being three fairly distinct zones for EVs in terms of efficiency. At the top is basically the Tesla category, with MPGE ratings above 120. In the middle is a group of mostly Asian car manufacturers that have developed some compelling EVs, but they are mostly just average priced cars targeting the cost conscious consumers looking for a cheap to drive and maintain commuter vehicle. These are pretty efficient vehicles, but not very exciting and have MPGE ratings between 100 and 120. And at the bottom is where it's interesting. This is where we find the more refined luxury brands that are on the hunt to kill some Tesla. Yet they all seem to end up with less than 100 MPGE and overall just shockingly bad efficiency. And I can't help but chuckle every time a new EV is unveiled taking aim at Tesla when this is one area that these manufacturers just can't seem to compete with at least for now. So that's why I think Tesla still has a huge advantage when it comes to the efficiency of their vehicles, and it's the biggest area that other manufacturers are lagging behind. And if you decide to buy a Tesla and this video helped you out, feel free to use my referral link in the description below in making your purchase, and we'll both get a thousand free supercharging miles. Thank you so much to everyone that has already used my referral link. You know who you are, and you're awesome. Anyway, let me know down below if you have any comments or questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Baby.